Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Gabriel India Limited Q2 FY25 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectation of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involves risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing the star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishi Luharuka, CFO, Gabriel India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone present on the call. Joining me today, we have Atul Zaggi, our Managing Director, Nilesh Jain, our Company Secretary, and our IR Advisors, SGA. Let me begin with introducing our newly appointed Managing Director, Mr. Atul Zaggi. Mr. Zaggi holds a Bachelor's Degree in Mechanical Engineering from Thapar Institute of Engineering and Technology, a Postgraduate Diploma in Business Administration from IMD Geyserberg, and a Master's in Quality Management from BITS Pilari. Additionally, Mr. Zaggi is a certified Six Sigma Black Belt and has completed prestigious leadership programs, including the VLFM program, the Advanced Management program from MIT Sloan, and the Oxford Strategic Leadership Program from the University of Oxford. With 25 years of rich and diverse experience, Mr. Zaghi has led key areas like maintenance, supplier development, corporate quality, and manufacturing excellence. Over the years, he has played a pivotal role in numerous initiatives within both Gabriel India and Anand Group, like Quality Circle, BSME. Under the leadership, Gabriel, under the leadership, Gabriel India's two hundred. Oh, sorry for that. Under his leadership, Gabriel India's two-wheeler BU and CVBU divisions have grown significantly over the last few years. These businesses have earned numerous accolades at national and global platforms while building a strong business pipeline and implementing robust manufacturing and quality systems. Before handing over the call to Mr. Atul Zaghi to discuss financial performance and industry highlights, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Mr. Manoj Kolatkar, whose outstanding leadership as MD has been instrumental in shaping Gabriel India's future and journey to its current standing. Uh, on behalf of the board of the directors and entire organization, I express my deep gratitude for his dedication and wish him all the very best in his future endeavors. With this, let me invite Mr. Atul Zaghi to discuss the performance highlights for the quarter and for the half year ended September 30th. Uh, good morning, everyone present on the call. Uh, thanks, Rishi, for the warm introduction. So I would like to walk you through the Q2 FY25 business performance along with the industry highlights. We have uploaded our results and investor presentation for the quarter ended uh, 30th of September 2024 on the stock exchange and company website. Hope each one of you had a chance to go through the same. I'm also pleased to announce that the board of directors have declared an interim dividend of rupees 1.75 per share having face value of rupees one each. I'll now give a brief overview of the company's operation and take you along uh, the presentation. So we had uh, another strong quarter, uh, the Q2. Our operating revenue for the previous quarter increased by 6.9% year on year, reaching uh, 924 crores. This growth is mainly attributed towards improvement in the two-wheeler and the EV two-wheeler sales. EBITDA margins for Q2 FY25 remained stable at 8.7% as compared to Q2 FY24. PAT stood at 53 crores, show, showcasing a 12.2% YOI growth. Let me give you some highlights on the industry dynamics, starting with the passenger vehicles. In Q2 FY25, passenger vehicle sales volume reached 12.5 lakh units, uh, marking a slight decline of 0.6% YOI. This indicates softer demand in, in this segment. Uh, however, in the 
यूवी कैटेगरी यूटिलिटी व्हीकल कैटेगरी इट कंटिन्यूज टू परफॉर्म वेल अचीविंग अ 12.3 परसेंट ग्रोथ ड्यूरिंग द सेम पीरियड ड्रिवन बाय द कस्टमर प्रेफरेंस फॉर एसयूवी एंड मल्टी फंक्शनल व्हीकल दिस कॉन्ट्रास्ट रिफ्लेक्ट द मिक्स डिमांड पैटर्न विद इन दल पैसेंजर व्हीकल सेक्टर इन्फ्लुएंस बाय द एनवायरमेंटल इकोनॉमिक एंड मार्केट स्पेसिफिक फैक्टर With the sales figures for the first half of fiscal year were slightly uh, below expectation, the outlook for the second half remains optimistic, particularly with the upcoming festive season. However, despite the expected uptick, the short-term outlook for automobile retail is cautiously optimistic. Coming to the commercial vehicle side, uh, in Q2 FY25, the commercial vehicle sector saw uh, YOYD growth of 9.2%. while exports in the cv uh, sector exhibited strong growth of 16% but the overall domestic demand remained weak registering a 11% decline the overall dip in the demand was largely attributed to extended monsoon delays and unfavorable climatic conditions which disrupted the market activity additionally reduced spending on infrastructure projects significantly impacted the growth in this particular sector Looking ahead, the CV segment expects improved performance in the coming months, driven by new product launches and anticipated sales growth in the rural markets. Better agriculture conditions following a good monsoon season are expected to boost the demand in this particular area. Now, on the two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment, uh, we saw an impressive growth of 13.1 percent YOY, with scooters leading the way at 16.7 percent, followed by the motorcycles and mopeds. which grew by 11.3 and 17.9% respectively the three wheeler segment also showed a positive trend reaching 2.9 lakh unit in sales uh, representing a 4.7% yoy increase this robust growth in two and three wheeler underscores rising demand for affordable and fuel efficient transportation especially in the rural and the urban uh, semi urban areas The strong performance in this segment contrasts with the challenges faced by the passenger vehicle market, uh, showcasing a clear shift in the consumer preference. On the EV side, uh, now at a global level, we are we are looking at around 85 million electric vehicles on the road, and India uh, already clocking 500,000 EVs in the same time frame this year, driv- primarily driven by the various glo- government initiatives. the ongoing growth driven by robust consumer demand and increasing preference for the two wheeler especially again in the rural area suggests that the, the industry is heading for a record breaking year if this continues fy25 could see a two wheeler industry setting a new benchmark in the automotive india's automotive sector so i would also like to re- reiterate that as we navigate the evolving automotive landscape landscape our company remains committed to innovation and adaptability we take pride in being a market leader across the two wheeler three wheeler ev and the other key segments our active expansion of the product range reflects our dedication to meet diverse customer needs as the industry continues to advance we expect our performance to grow in alignment with a robust focus on research innovation and quality we aim to deliver solutions that on, not only meet but exceed the expectations driving a sustainable uh, growth our commitment to excellence reinforces our position as a trusted partner empowering our customers to thrive in the dynamic auto sector on that note i come to the end of my opening remarks i now request the moderator to begin the q and a session thank you very much We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Viraj from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Viraj, you are muffled. Just one sec. Can 
Yeah, am I audible now? Yeah, better than us. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on your new role. Wish you many success uh, in the future. Uh, just a couple of questions on the business. Uh, one is, you know, on the overall uh, strategy. So, you know, what do you understand? You've been with Gabriel for a very long period of time. You know the company quite well. But broadly in terms of strategy and, you know, portfolio, and including new product initiatives is there any is there any rethink or is there any change in strategy uh you know uh you're looking at and just to add to it uh you know what will be your top five priorities you're looking at in terms of the business uh so that is the first question okay so yeah uh without thanks uh thanks for the good wishes See, uh, <clears throat> as you rightly mentioned, uh, I have been with uh, with Gabriel uh, for uh, now more than 24 years. Uh, so, as far as the overall strategy is concerned, I was uh, involved even in the last strategy cycle uh, that <clears throat> that we had built for the next three to five years. So, uh, I I don't see a dramatic sort of a shift in the overall strategy that we have built. Uh, but yes, uh, in certain areas, definitely uh, some renewed focus uh, and uh, sort of little bit of extra push will definitely be there. Like uh, just to name few, uh, say the export segment is one area where uh, we would like to sort of expedite and push certain initiatives to uh, to meet our aspiration and our target on the export. Uh, this is one area, and which will obviously uh, impact the overall growth of the organization. Uh, second area is uh, on the uh, margin improvement. So uh, uh, this is another area where I would like to uh, to uh, sort of continue uh, the uh, uh, the push and maybe uh, sort of uh, rejuvenate and strengthen the core 90 program that we. Uh, I think we have been successfully running, uh, maybe with a little bit of tweak as I as I get more into the uh, into the nitty gritties. Uh, another area uh, of focus uh, is technology because again uh, it is clearly uh, it will clearly reflect the pace of growth that we are looking at. So these two will go hand in hand in hand together. Uh, the fourth area uh, is where I think we have been talking about it for quite some time. We were successful in uh, with the Nalpha uh, uh, sort of uh, expansion of the product portfolio, and I would like to definitely continue the push on the organic side to see uh, what what best can be done uh, at a much faster pace. So I think these are these are primarily the areas where I would like uh, and. I think most of them have been a part of the strategy, uh, but yes, in certain areas, uh, more focus, uh, more resources uh, is something that I am looking at at this uh, this stage. So okay. while I get into, uh, I am able to spend more time. I think in you know future interactions, one-on-one -on -one meetings, I think I'll be able to share more. Sure, look forward. Uh, just few questions on the subsidiary business. Uh, so, is there now any? I think post the decision by the government, we were looking at revisiting the terms uh, in terms of royalty, tech license fee, and uh, so any update you can give, you know, uh, has there been any arrangement, uh, you know, which has been entered into now within Alpha, and similarly, will this re continue to remain a wholly owned subsidy, or in the future, we may look to kind of, if there's any opportunity comes, we may look to kind of convert this into a GV structure? Mm -hmm. Thanks for that question. Um, our approach to this remains uh, similar uh, than what we had spoken last time. See, this is a strategic partnership, and uh, the idea here is to be a part of the growth market. And both in Alpha and Gabriel, uh, uh, along with Anand, we stand committed to making uh, more head, uh, head base. We have the tailwind with us with regards to being the uh, first few players in the country. And uh, with our deep relationship with Hyundai, uh, we certainly are working towards our plans. Now, coming to your PN3 application aspect, uh, yes, we have had uh, several rounds of conversations and discussions along with Alpha, 
we are evaluating various propositions with which we can uh, probably reapproach the government uh, in terms of a fresh approval. But uh, the contours of that are still in making, so we will be able to share it once we have revised uh, our application. Uh, coming to your subsidiary part, uh, till uh, I think we receive the PN3 approval, uh, it will continue to remain uh, Gabriel's 100% uh, subsidiary. And uh, but again, the whether we are subsidiary, whether we are holding, whether we are majority. Those are aspects that uh, are to be taken into consideration with the governing rules and regulations of the country. Uh, having said that, the endeavor is to ensure that the business is properly and adequately funded and all the growth plans that we have are being catered to. Uh, so that's the approach as of now. Uh, we will come back with uh, more details as and when we uh, develop on this topic. Okay, just two questions on this subsidy. Uh, you know, if you see the realizations, uh, in Q2 of this quarter versus Q1 or even Q4, uh, there has been a very material increase in realizations, uh, unit realizations for the subsidiary. Uh, and similarly, the cross margin has also moved up. Uh, so what explains the realization and the margin jump? So, uh, interestingly, uh, we had the SU2I, which is the Creta platform, which we had begun the operations with. In the last quarter, we have uh, started uh, supplying the uh, PS7i, which is the Alcazar platform, and uh, largely owing to that increased volume, we've been able to demonstrate some amount of operating leverage. Also, some benefits have flown in because uh, of a little better localization of this product as compared to uh, the Creta platform. Uh, but uh, I would not read too much into the growth as of now. Uh, with some more time, knowing the pressures of the market, we will see how the margins pan out. So, because uh, the same platform, Creta, also has other model variants, right? So, when you talked about Alcaza, and then you have Venue and other. So, since you are a sole supplier for Creta, and I'm assuming even for Alcaza, that, that, does that kind of naturally translate into, uh, you know, an opportunity to cater to for the other model variants as well? So interestingly, Viraj, uh, in the sunroof business, uh, no two platforms have the same sunroof, even if uh, the chassis remains the same. So, uh, for example, uh, the PA7i Alcazar is a much bigger sunroof as compared to the Creta. Venue is a smaller sunroof, and as far as uh, supplier synergy is concerned, that can be achieved. But other than that, it's a these programs are absolutely brand new uh, from its inception of design itself. Okay. Just last question and I'll come back in queue. See, we, you know, we talked about setting up a second line at a capex of 40, 50 crore. Yeah. And the current and the new lines, you know, I'm assuming they would be fungible. So given, uh, you know, Creta, given the volumes it is doing, we will be maybe at the year end, we will be doing around 1.2, 1.3 lakh units. And even with the Kia model, you know, which we're expecting, the peak utilization would seem, still would be, a, you know, probably a year away for the first line. So when we looking at adding a second line, you know, when the lead time also is quite less, maybe less than a year. Uh, uh, so, you know, how are you looking in terms of product or customer mix as, and what is driving the decision on the second line? All right, Viraj, a uh, couple of uh, data inputs. One is that uh, Alcaza volume needs to be taken into consideration. One. Second is that Creta, the volumes are uh, growing bigger in terms of the sunroof penetration. What we, what we began with and now what we supply, uh, there is already an uptick there. Third is that we already have a program, Kia, which we have won, which will start in mid of next year. Uh, that obviously would need uh, capacity. Uh, given the volumes that we have. Uh, we've also won one uh, do a small volume platform, um, which uh, which is interestingly one of the first export programs that we have. Now, uh, our assessment is that by mid of next year, we will be uh, completely out of capacity. And uh, for us to develop 
the line and the model on that line for the businesses that we have in the pipeline in terms of discussion, we would need the second line. We have planned a small uh, capacity enhancement on the existing line to meet the current capacity itself. And uh, once the second line is, is there, we, we are in a uh, our safe assumption on the volumes is that we will be able to utilize that line also by end of 2026 uh, completely. Okay, I'll come back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mumuksh Mandelesa from Anand Rati Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, happy festive season to the management and uh, congratulations and all the best who are to serve for the new role. And uh, good to see the continuing solid revenues and margins for the Sunroom business. Uh, sir, on the, uh, firstly, on the uh, last previous question on the Sunroom side, sir, uh, uh, so you expect sir, uh, next year by itself the second phase also uh, to get fully utilized uh, uh, led by this upcoming uh, Kia model. That's right, sir? 2026, uh, Mamuki. Good to hear your yeah. voice. Yeah, 2026. Okay, uh, calendar year 2026, you are saying. The installation will happen in 25 and the utilization uh, will start in 25, but uh, full utilization will be by 26. Okay, this is calendar year, right, right sir? Got it, sir. Uh, and sir, also just on the any new further additions in terms of order wins, sir. Uh, in the Sandu side, uh, we were in advanced stock uh, with the Citron, uh, Skoda, Volkswagen, and even the Hyundai model, new model. Uh, just any update on the confirmation on this, sir? Yeah. Uh, so as I mentioned to Viraj as well, uh, Mumuksh, we have got one order, uh, which is the first export order out of this entity. Uh, a small volume program, but there is also an EV platform that is supposed to be built in, which we are hoping to get. Um, and uh, probably in the next quarter, we'll be able to share that as well. Um, so now, but that customer also is this is all Hyundai and Kia only. Okay, and also, sir, even the Creta EV also will get added, right, sir? That's right. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, so, secondly, on the uh, uh, any update on the new expansions in terms of m &A and the partnership model, uh, how are you seeing the opportunity there, sir? And uh, in the recent interviews, even Mahindra, sir, had talked about uh, uh, new opportunities in these areas. So, how do you see that flowing uh, to Gabriel, sir? Uh, our uh, approach towards uh, the partnership piece remains where it is. Uh, we are looking at inorganic pursuits in order to achieve our uh, vision. And uh, as we had updated the previous quarter, we are in active conversations uh, on those as well. We will be able to update uh, when those rectify. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, coming to on the side, sir, uh, uh, in terms of financial uh, numbers, uh, this quarter, uh, in standard numbers, uh, Q and Q employee costs saw about 13% jump, uh, which led to a margin decline on the standard numbers. So any one-off there, sir, or uh, how do you see the run rate for the employee costs? Like? For the Sandu business, how much? Uh, this was standalone, sir. Standalone, okay. Yeah, so there was, uh, this is not a one-off. Uh, there has been some uh, revisions in the uh, wages of the operating engineers, which we have. Also, uh, because of the cyclicity of the and the seasonality of the business, we've added some uh, workforce, uh, which has resulted into uh, a mismatch between the revenue and the and the cost. Uh, so that's what probably is the reason why you're seeing the uh, the manpower cost a little higher than the previous quarter. Got it, sir. Uh, uh, so in uh, last quarter, you mentioned about the. Uh, uh, Two-wheeler side, we lost some market share uh, due to uh, budget exports not picking up. Uh, uh, but now, how you see going ahead, uh, how their volumes are shaping up? Uh, do you see the traction for their export volumes? Sir? So, uh, uh, specifically uh, to Bajaj, yes, we are uh, we are seeing uh, better export volumes coming back to us uh, in this particular uh, starting. Uh, October, which is the third quarter. So we will have to we'll have to see how they continue. But at least the projections are much better than the second quarter. What what we saw in the second quarter. 
and so generally uh, in, uh, we see that uh, last uh, first half has been broadly in line uh, with the underlying industry in terms of growth for the standalone business uh, uh, so just want to understand more how do you see the content per vehicle increase happening uh, 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 how is the uh, areas like inverted front fork fsd doing well sir? so uh, yes definitely i think uh, the more we will continue to get into uh, the uh, the products like the inverted front forks or the monoshocks or the gas canisters or the FSDs, the content per vehicle would continue to improve uh, there. So uh, there are certain programs in the pipeline where uh, uh, I think we are moving away from the conventional front forks to a big front forks. Uh, so definitely the content per vehicle is expected to be better. But yes, as you know, uh, this is a growing market. Uh, there the while multiple developments are going on multiple dis discussions are going on with the customers but obviously uh, you will over a period of time we will see uh, uh, a good substantial number on the road uh, uh, the, the vehicles with these kind of uh, uh, sort of front forks and these kind of uh, uh, products Okay. Uh, was any uh, element of deflation uh, in this quarter uh, due to steel prices coming down, sir? Any pass through of that happening, sir? No, uh, the impact of uh, on the RMC on the commodities. What are you asking? Yeah. So basically, I mean, if steel prices have come down, so is there any pass through of that uh, happening to the OEM side? Yeah. So with the back-to-back -back arrangement that we have, uh, 95 to 98 percent is the pass through that we have. And uh, to that extent, uh, roughly around 0.1 to 0.2 percent is the impact of uh, the commodities uh, going down. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, uh, so, uh, just lastly, uh, this quarter we saw very good pickup in the export side for the suspension business. Uh, 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 what has led to that pickup? And just on lastly, on the tax rate for the console and the sunroof business, sir. Expected, right? On the on the exports uh, uh, with uh, with both uh, the uh, the Latin America business that we have with uh, GDC and uh, DAF uh, in Europe, we saw much better number uh, uh, as compared to the first quarter. So uh, that that is the reason for a for a for a healthy uh, second quarter uh, in terms of the exports. Oh, she asked me for yeah, tax rate, sir. Tax rate, so twenty-five percent for Gabriel and fifteen percent for Nancy. Got it, sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Amosh. The next question is from the line of Amit Hiranandani from SMIFS Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the MD sir for the new role at Gabriel yeah. India. Best wishes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, as the new managing director, uh, can you throw some numbers on the you know next five years specifically? You know where do you aim to take the consolidated top line margins and prospects for the new client additions and and specifically on the roadmap for the new product introduction, please. Uh, so, Amit, uh, in terms of <laughs> in terms of the anyway, thanks for the good wishes. Uh, so in terms of the numbers uh, at this stage i will not be i will not be in a position to share uh, any sort of forward looking uh, numbers but uh, as i mentioned uh, i think the key focus areas uh, where definitely i would like to uh, to focus more and to see how we can sort of speed up and uh, do better is is definitely on the overall growth uh, where Special focus would be there on exports, both on the OE as well as the aftermarket side, uh, and also our continuous focus on uh, uh, sort of uh, improving the profitability bottom line. And uh, again, technology is going to be an important enabler. So I think these are the focus areas, as I mentioned up, uh, earlier. But uh, one, it is it is sort of too early to. Uh, to get into the numbers, I've just, just uh, I think, it's the third day today in office uh, there. But uh, again, I can only assure you of, uh, of 
focus on these particular areas at this moment of time. Sure. Sir, uh, are we on track to achieve a double-digit EBITDA margin for the standalone business by FI26? Well, uh, subject to obviously commodity or other aspects, uh, we, the endeavor continues. Okay. Sir, uh, any updates on, uh, you know, uh, why do you understand the FSD technology wins because we are, we are supplying to XCV700, but any other new wins here? So, uh, uh, no firm uh, sort of LOI uh, as of now, Amit, uh, but uh, there are a couple of discussions going on uh, on the POCs, the proof of concepts with customers. So, hopefully, I think in the, up, in the uh, coming few months, I see a possibility of converting that into, uh, into an LOI. But in, in hand, uh, as of now, uh, nothing beyond that. Sure, sure. On the sunroof side, sir, uh, presently, can you just clarify which all models we are currently supplying the sunroof and what all new models are in the pipeline? Beta and uh, Alcazar is what we supply currently, Amit. And uh, there is an unnamed model called uh, AY from Kia that uh, the SOP is uh, going to happen soon. Okay. And sir, regarding the uh, royalty side, so Gabriel pays about 5% to Inalpha and 2% of the Sunroof's revenue as a management fees to Anand Group. I mean, is this understanding correct? So 5% is paid by Inalpha Gabriel to both Inalpha and Gabriel uh, Sandalur. Okay, so it's in, it's in total 5% you pay. That is right. Okay, okay. Understood, understood. Uh, okay. So on these uh, units, sunroof units side, so how many units were produced in H1? We do not share volumes and realizations per sunroof, uh, unfortunately, Amit. No problem. So lastly, are you are we receiving any income tax benefits on the sunroof business, given the very low effective tax rate in Q1 and Q2? It is a 15% entity, and that is how it will remain. So this will continue for uh, for the coming years as well? Yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. Great, great. All the best, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ramit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Aryan Capital Markets Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, Sorry to interrupt, the current participant has been disconnected. Uh, we will move on to the next participant. It's from the line of Abhishek Jain from Alpha Today Advisors. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, my first question on the Sunbook side. Uh, so basically, we have seen a very impressive performance on the margin side in last two quarters. So uh, what is the reason of such a uh, strong margin performance uh, uh, despite the uh, royalty of around 5%. And this margin will be sustainable in the coming uh, quarter. Ashik, we are not able to hear you. Your voice is too muffled. You will have to be a little away from the speaker and uh, again ask the question, please. Are you able to hear me now? A little better, yes. Uh, Mr. Sir, uh, could you please use your handset? Okay. Hello? Yes, Abhishek, we can hear you. Uh, so, sir, uh, my question on the sunroof uh, margin, uh, we have seen very impressive performance in the last two quarters, and margin has gone up to around 18% now. So, is this margin sustainable on the sunroof side? Abhishek, uh, uh, it's an evolving business. It's too early to say that comment on sustainability of this margin. Uh, having said that, uh, because of the competition also coming in and also the composition of sunroof between panoramic and TVS, uh, these margins will uh, sort of see some changes for sure. So uh, that's what I had mentioned to Viraj as well. We should not uh, look at look too much into this uh, quarter in terms of margins. Our endeavor would remain uh, to be in the range of 12 to 14 percent. 12 to 40 percent. And the, in the, uh, how much the import content in uh, subsidies uh, business? Sir? In the sunroof, you think? Yes, sir. 
So currently, uh, we have 60% uh, broadly the import content. So is this margin performance in the last two quarter uh, is the is the uh, the region of the any uh, fall in the raw materials prices or something? Uh, no, sunroof. Uh, there is uh, yeah, there is no commodity in that. Okay, and uh, sir, uh, how much the current rate of the production of the sunroof? Uh, we are currently doing close to uh, ten to twelve thousand of sunroofs per per month. And uh, what is your target for FI26 to uh, target uh, 20? Target for? Uh, FI26, sir, on uh, monthly basis? The volume? No, we don't give forward-looking guidances for volumes. Uh, we've shared in the past that we are looking at uh, 400 odd crores uh, this year, and okay. uh, our target would be to achieve uh, 800 to 1,000 crores uh, in the next five years. Next, uh, uh, next, next five years. Hello. Yes, next five years. Okay. And uh, sir, uh, in this uh, uh, first half, uh, how much the revenue uh, secured from the EV business? So broadly, we our EV business is is two to three percent of our total top line. Two to three percent. And my last question on that: uh, What is the region of the underperforming in the four-wheeler segment, despite that uh, new volume started from the new Swift? So, uh, on the four-wheeler side, uh, uh, I think there are a couple of uh, factors. It's one, uh, the overall uh, overall industry. You know, uh, I think in the, pre in the last quarter has, has not done so well and now within that uh, it is a model mix issue so uh, a couple of our models uh, have done relatively lesser numbers uh, than the models where we were not uh, we are not present so it is a mix issue uh, i think that has impacted the uh, uv side actually but you are targeting the higher revenue from the uh, new shift uh, uh, business uh, around incremental revenue of the 100 crores in this year. What happened there, sir? Uh, you're talking of the SWIFT? Yes, sir. Uh, so SWIFT, uh, I think as would have been, would have shared earlier, I think SWIFT uh, is a platform where we are working on. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we are little, little away right now from the SOP. So it has not uh, got into the production. We are right now in the development stage of that model. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. That's all for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Aryan Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My line got dropped. Uh, sir, just uh, wanted to understand on the FCD side, uh, like um, if you can update on the Maruti and Tata Motors uh, regarding that adoption. You, you mentioned FCD? Yes, sir. FSD, sorry. FSD, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think I, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, on the FSD, uh, in, in in terms of the vehicle on road and in production, uh, the XUV7 for Mahindra is going on. Uh, there are a couple of other uh, customer platforms where we are working on the proof of concept right now. Uh, I would not be able to sort of name the platforms because the discussions are going on. Uh, we don't have a firm LOI on this, but we are looking. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, converting uh, maybe one of them or both of them uh, into uh, into a firm LOI. So once that happens, uh, we will be able to share more information on that. Okay, and sir, with the LOI from the Siemens uh, for e loco, uh, what are Gabriel's next step in the expanding beyond Indian Railway, and do you foresee significant growth in this segment in the near term? I think uh, good question. Uh, so yes, there are opportunities outside the country in terms of railways. We are trying to map that at this point in time. So we don't have a number which we have casted out in terms of growth potential outside the country. Uh, but uh, once we have a development, we would uh, share it. Okay, sure. 
And sir, like earlier participant also asked on the sunroof side, but my question on the localization process for the sunroof business, for the Kia program, and what will its impact on margin be like going forward? Hey, uh, I think localization should be looked at from a supply chain uh, disruption point of view rather than looking at improvement in margin because at the end of the day, uh, these do get transferred to the customer in terms of price reduction. Uh, currently, we are working at a 60% uh, localization. There are critical components which are being imported, which uh, we'll have to be very sensitive about uh, in terms of localizing it. Uh, having said that, we have a plan. So the idea broadly would be to sort of bring it down to 40 odd percent, is what Mr. Palatkar had also shared. Uh, we are working on that plan uh, for the subsequent platforms, but given the entity has just begun and there is only two programs, we want to also understand the product and the nuances of it uh, before we start doing other localization. Okay, sir. And sir, uh, can you share a timeline for the plan 400 million uh, for the phase two expansion? Like what kind of capacity increases are you expecting? Okay, so we, we, we already have one line, uh, ballpark 150 to 180,000 sunroofs. We are planning for another line, uh, which is going to have a similar capacity. And uh, thereafter, it will depend upon the model, whether it is a panoramic or a TVS, as to what we will look for further expansion. Okay. So this last two questions, one on the CV side, like uh, when we expecting uh, uh, better growth in that segment, and on the uh, demand scenario side, how we are uh, seeing uh, further for the rural and urban both, if you can uh, give some highlights. Yeah. So... Uh, on the CV side, as far as the domestic market is concerned, uh, I think uh, you are aware that uh, we have practically more than 80% to 90% market share. So obviously, with that kind of a market share, we, we continue to uh, perform exactly in, in sync with the market. Uh, and uh, the first half in the commercial vehicle side was not so great. Okay, while we are expecting a better uh, H2. So uh, I think the focus for us on the CV side uh, is primarily looking at uh, exports market. And this is where we are concentrating and we would like to uh, to sort of expand the portfolio beyond what we are doing, what we started doing a couple of years back with DAF. So I think this is the focus area as far as the CV is concerned. So uh, because... In terms of share of business, there is now very little that we can uh, we can do beyond what we already have. And within that also, uh, wherever uh, uh, wherever the opportunities are there to uh, to get into uh, so some products or the sub products where we are not there, we are already working with uh, customers. So, and in terms of new programs, uh, the Mahindra UPP uh, is one platform that is there, uh, and then couple of Tata Motors uh, platforms where we are working on. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya from Skill Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, you know, I have been uh, tracking your company since uh, 2017, and uh, if I look at your past commentary, uh, we have always uh, mentioned that we aspire to do double-digit margins in our uh, standalone business. Uh, so there have been periods, uh, you know, where the commodity cycle was not in our favor, while there have been periods where the, when it has been in favor, as witnessed in the last year. Uh, we had also implemented, you know, our Code 90 initiative, where we had undertaken a lot of cost initiatives. But, sir, in spite of, you know, of, of various initiatives and the market cycle also in our favor, we have been unable to achieve those double-digit margins. So, you know, if you could just help us understand, uh, does the standalone business have the capability to do double-digit margins? And if yes, uh, so what would lead to the same and in what time frame do we, uh, uh, in what time frame do we aspire to achieve the same? Well, uh, I understand your perspective uh, and that's a similar perspective which was shared when we had also talked about our margin expansion uh, initiative. Uh, we clearly demonstrated that, uh, you know, from a 7.1% we moved down to now the 8.5% to 9% trajectory. Uh, 
so there is a uh, there is an improvement there for sure now uh, if you look at uh, this journey is going to be incremental and this journey is going to uh, obviously expect certain amount of uh, non issues like commodity for sure uh, having said that the endeavor of moving to double digit continues for us the co 90 program is not an event but a journey and uh, we are aggressively pursuing it now with us coming on board we will also be re-energizing it with more valor and vigor uh, we continue to be committed to moving to the double digit margin for the standalone business uh, by 2026 understood so this is not an aspiration but we have a clear roadmap you know to achieve the double digit margins oh yes we've spoken at length on what the core 90 program is it includes every single facet of uh, the income statement as well as the balance sheet and uh, there is a team there are a set of teams which drive these uh, cost as well as income aspects and there is a clear cut uh, roadmap action plan and a review mechanism which is already in place uh, which is driven at the uh, topmost level by the md and myself so just to add uh, add to it i think i see two uh, positive uh, in the recent few quarters as compared to the previous uh, timeline that you mentioned i think one is uh, i think we have been able to uh, be more stable in terms of our uh, performance i would say that and secondly that is, there is a clear shift like as you mentioned from 7 7.1 7.2 range to now between 8 and a half to 9 uh, so definitely i think uh, this means that whatever we have been doing whatever this initiative uh, we had uh, looked at i think it is it is helping us to move in the right direction uh, we uh, time to time we we keep tweaking it to bring new energy to it to bring new aspects uh, to it because as you look at things differently uh, you you come across various opportunities and uh, this uh, this supported with more focus on exports. This supported with more focus on on the product mix. I'm sure would help us to to achieve that number. But we are completely uh, committed towards that number, and uh, uh, I'm very hopeful that we will be able to uh, deliver it within the time frame that which he mentioned. I say just to add to what uh, Mr. Atul mentioned, uh, the sustenance of improvement in the margin is also very critical. So it's always good to uh, put in some uh, actions, see it sustain, then move into another set of actions, and that's how you are seeing the margin plan out. Understood, sir. Thanks for the detailed reply. And sir, uh, we were looking to introduce uh, one more new product by the end of this year. Uh, so what is the status of the same? We are in advanced discussions uh, on that. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to share much details, but uh, we are hopeful of. Understood. And so the royalty income uh, which the standalone business receives from a subsidiary, so is it accounted in our revenue or is it part of our other income? Other income. Other income. Hello? Yeah, other income. Other income. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for answering my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, two questions. Hello. Viraj, again, your voice is muffled. Little away from the speaker. Yeah, so just two questions. Uh, one is on the uh, standalone business. You know, we are a supplier to TAR. So even for the rocks model, have you won the business for that? No, uh, we, we are not there on the rocks uh, platform. Okay. And second is on the sunroof business. Uh, you talked about us looking to cater to an export opportunity. So the arrangement with uh, in Alpha, does that kind of give us an play to eventually also tap into, you know, uh, some of their home markets or other markets? Or how is the arrangement when it comes to outside India market play? Great question there, uh, Virajso. See, at the end of the day, as I have been mentioning always, that uh, it's a partnership, and uh, the idea here is to serve the customer. 
there's the customer is expecting a supply in a geography where uh, in alpha does not have a manufacturing presence or the customer from the sourcing office is in a different country these options are available for us to jointly discuss and agree and that's what has happened in this particular case it's a small volume but uh, needless to say it's a good start but if you look at globally for an alpha also we have a very healthy presence in china and other european set up so in terms of opportunity or addressable set for us uh, when it comes to export or oh, sanro is that something one can see not immediately but if i have to look at say next four five years on the line is that something can be material for the entity uh, no it will be largely uh, india bond okay and that's all so sure. thank you very much good luck thank you thank you very much thank you participants who wish to ask a question to the management may press star and 1 ladies and gentlemen if you wish to ask a question you may press star and 1 at this time the next question is from the line of puneet javeri an individual investor please go ahead Oh hi thanks for the opportunity just one question on the sunroof side so your phase 1 line has about 1.5 lakh capacity uh, i just want to understand for the industry because we are a under penetrated market in terms of domestic volume and domestic uh, production uh, could you just talk to us about what is the current capacity for the industry uh, how many are currently imported within india so just to get a sense of how much is this current capacity of 1.5 lakh in terms of the industry and once you are looking to add another 1.5 lakh how would that be in terms of the total either import or the total production within the country or the use of sunroof within the country just wanted to understand on that sir so uh it's a little difficult uh, mathematics given that uh, what is produced by the competition on which line is a little discrete information but ballpark we look we uh, if we take a 4.2 million and of a production base uh sun roof would be anywhere between uh 900000 to 1.2 million and uh, currently our fair estimate with sobasto uh, arsels and mahindra goldi uh close to uh, 50% uh, is imported and 50% would be domestic going forward uh, depending upon the volume and the uh, mix uh, i would safely assume with uh, new competition coming in uh it would become 80% local supply and 20% import uh and but do you see that uh, over the next uh, like because we have seen so, uh, suvification of the industry over the last two years and based on the plans that companies like mahindra and tata have put out the suv content and suv launches will be much more in the next 5 to 6 years and that they've given plans till uh, 2030 Uh, so do you see this number of about uh, 900k to 1.2 million going up uh you know uh, dramatically over the next 5 to 6 years uh, and if any kind of range you could provide you see that roughly about uh, 40% to 45% of the vehicles will have sunroof over the next 5 to 6 years which presents a very good opportunity for for someone like Revir I'll try to try and give you uh, a perspective here if we assume yeah. million 6 and a half million by 2030 and yeah. uh, 50% of that coming through SUV uh my rough estimate of penetration would be in the range of 50 to 60% uh and uh, in case of uh, other hatchback and uvs and other things you can roughly take 25% so that yeah be- yeah understood uh thanks so much for thanks so much for the opportunity yeah. and wish you the best thank you thank you thank you a reminder to all participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of jayesh gandhi from harshad gandhi securities please go ahead so uh, just a clarification our sunroof business is accounted as subsidiary and 5% of uh, uh, the royalty is shared between inalpha and gabriel and out of that gabriel accounts that part as other income is that Understanding correct? That's true. Yes. Okay. Okay. That, that's all from my side, sir. Have good luck for future. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. 
As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Atul Chaghi for their closing comments. So, uh, thanks a lot. So, I take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining on the call. I hope you have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with us or Strategic Group uh, Growth Advisor, our Investor Relationship uh, Advisor. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Gabriel India, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.